tragic thing is when we read about Boko Haram. Well, let's make it more personal. What if you read about a single mom in your town who was abusing her children? And you just think, how could she do such a thing? But the tragic thing is we know exactly how she could do such a thing. You may not have committed that specific act, but you're somewhere on that continuum in the comparison. Jesus, the, the Bible says, you know, we, we are not, we can't understand sin. To whom much is given, much is required. He that knows what is right to do and does not do it to him that is sin. And the Bible says we're to think of others as better than ourselves. Now, what that means is if I'm in Hollywood where I had a ministry for 12 years and I see some transvestite hooker leaning in a doorway, I have a scripture that says I'm to think of that person as better than myself. Well, that is an offense to my intellect. But the Bible says the cross is an offense to our intellect. Why? Because my behavior is not that behavior. I'm a YWAM leader. Would it be to dishonor Jesus and his work in my life of transforming me? To think of that person as better than me? No. I don't know that story. I can tell you what, though. I am the world's greatest living authority on my faults and failures. I'm not in condemnation about it, but I'm thanksgiving because I have a memory. And if I think if speculatively, what if that person had been raised in my household? What if they were in the fifth generation of a believing family? It is no problem intellectually to give them the benefit of the doubt and to assume they would be a better woman of God or man of God than I currently am. So we, when we pray for Boko Haram, when we pray for ISIS, we are not saying, how could you do such a thing? But we are kneeling among them and we are saying, God, have mercy on us. Because we are shedders of blood. Because we are curses of mankind. Let me bring it down even more personally. One of the greatest temptations we have, of course, is to be stewards of spiritual knowledge and insight. To be prayer movement people. To be missions people. I mean, people can get all puffed up because they're a plumber. Or a good athlete. How much more intoxicating is it to talk about what we're talking about? To have a sense of an understanding of the cosmic, to understand the sweep of human history, to have a sense of God's purpose in the nations, to, to participate in the grandeur of God's purpose. The disciples became pretty bad before they got better. They wouldn't have been calling down fire on villages when they were going fishing. They had to hang around with Jesus for a few weeks before they got that bad. The Bible says knowledge puffeth up, and spiritual insight is the most intoxicating toward puffing. As I was sitting there listening tonight, I just thought, Lord, you know, help us. Help me again, as one with many stories, to enter into godly sorrow tonight. To get low among the elders. That's one of the words that gave Lynn and I some years ago, we just need to get our heads down among you, you know, for our own survival in our journey with you as fellow, our fellow YWAM elders. And, you know, one of the first confessions that we make is, is how clueless we are. And uh, it's in this sense, you know, we have people like Peter and Donna who he seem to live in that scripture at the end of the Old Testament where God says, I am the God who can align generations. I want to turn the hearts of children to parents, parents to children, you see. And that is the foundational wound. How did the big people treat you when you were this tiny little creature? And we carry the memory of that. In Washington, D.C., a few years ago, we had the In the Gap. So we got this massive event, you know, and aerial photos, real, you know, show of more than a million people huge jumbotrons, you know, and we're, we're coming before the Lord to do this, you know, and I was the guy up on the platform asking categories of men to humble themselves, you know, so there will be hundreds of thousands at a time, uh, uh, you know, weeping before God about the story of the land as they stood in the gap in that unique North American story. When I got back to my hotel room, I felt elated. And I kneeled to thank the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me very clearly, and he said, you know, 
The wound between brothers and sisters is enormous. The pain of women is vast. And it's interesting, my mind busied then, speculatively, with all my experience, both biblical knowledge and experience, to approach that interesting subject. And the Lord just said, you don't have a clue. And I have been living ever since that with a sense of dread that in my maleness as a male authority figure, in my body language, my tone of voice, my first force of personality, there is this blindness that marginalizes my sisters. I can speculate a little bit about what it might be, how hard it might be for you to walk with us as your brothers and not be taken that seriously in your revelation. I don't know, but I, in some sense, I'm still kneeling there beside that bed in Washington, D.C., with the Lord's severe statement over me. And I'm, I want revelation. I want the gift of godly sorrow. I look at my wife and my daughter and my sisters, and there's that sense of acquiescence to God's word. And I'm in some ways stuck there. Now, when we think about ISIS, when we think about those systems, we see a terrible diminution of women, don't we? We see that, that extreme phenomena in human culture of the veiling of women. But if we're to pray into all of that tonight, and we pray without identification, look at Jesus, because he was numbered with the transgressors, God hath highly exalted him. So Lord, we, let's stand right now. We come before you as the redeemed in Christ, we are not superior to any other human being. But we say to the principalities and powers and to anybody who will listen to us, we who deserve judgment didn't receive judgment because the judgment fell on a perfect lamb, just like in that ancient Passover in Egypt. And we present the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts of our heart as, as the fact that we're still breathing. We're breathing by the mercy of God. I, John Dawson, deserve to be taken out the back and shot years ago because the wages of sin is death. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And like Rav Shaul, the Apostle Paul, if you get a revelation of yourself before God, we will all feel that we are the chief of sinners. When we had that illumination of the scripture a few minutes ago, as Lynn said, you could see that superiority and ruthlessness that went together. And Lord, we, we ask you to have mercy on us and come by the Holy Spirit. There are no black belt intercessors. The first principle is we know not how to pray as we ought. And so we divest ourselves of religious pride. We kneel with this terrible shattered humanity. The only difference between us and them is that somebody prayed for us. Somebody stood in a gap for us. Somebody presented the blood of the Lamb. Somebody took initiative animated by the love of Jesus and they showed us a way of reconciliation to you. And so we cry out, Lord, for the earth under the powers and we say, Lord, have mercy upon us. And we are a praying people. Look upon our love for one another, Lord. In conferences like this, it seems like a courtship. We see the beauty of the Filipinos and the Koreans and the Mongolians and the Chinese. And we just are, our breath is taken away because you are revealed there among them in ways that we do not see in our own culture. And we run to one another's darlings on our faces and we, we beamed with radiant joy. And we saw those whom we're being married to. Your land shall be called Beulah. And so, Lord, we present to you our faith in your victory and your sacrifice. 
and we present to you the victory of our union. And we say, come Holy Spirit and inhabit our prayers that we might dance for joy in our redemption, that we might weep and travail as we feel your pain. We know, Lord, intercession for the earth is a ministry to you first. How are you feeling today, Lord? We see the sisterhood of Mary there in Darmstadt would walk in that garden. They would look at the, head, the headlines in the newspaper and they would groan for Jesus, what he was going through, looking at what he had to see. So we're not asking you to fix the earth for our sake. We don't deserve it. We know you have a broken heart and these are your children. And so we offer ourselves to you, Lord, as a priestly people. That as we get on the plains and we walk through our places, that we would be breathing in and out, intercession. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. And that in times of agreement, we would forbid and we would, for, we would permit. We would bind and we would release. Not because it's a religious technology, but because the living God is standing up us in that moment. And we are simply the temple in which he dwells as leader and commander of the heavenly host. Thank you.